Coach Ade and welcome back to Go On The Run. And today, we're going to be looking at different types of services. Let's just jump to the Kubernetes um, documentation webpage. When we started talking about services, I did not come to this page and, you know, go through it and read, read it um, like I did with pods and, you know, um, deployment set and all that stuff, right? And part of the reason is because I'm really trying to keep the video short and then me going through reading all this stuff that you can read for yourself doesn't really help with the length of the video. So if you haven't yet read up on services, please do a lot of information here. As you can see, um, this is pretty long and they have some really nice diagrams. They're going to talk about things that we're not going to cover. Like I'm never going to show you how to access a service using um, the environmental variable but it's good to know. Um, okay, but what I wanna do is if you, for this page, there's like uh, the table of contents or outline on this side. And so you can see service, um, motivation, motivation, service resource, and so on and so on. And you know, defining a service, it's all here. I'm gonna scroll down all the way to publishing a service. And why publishing a service? Because this is where we get into, now that you've created a service um, or you have a service, how do you access it from different places? And so this is why we're gonna talk about service types in this video. So now I'm gonna read just this little bit. This is not a lot. So in terms, in this section here on publishing services, there are four types of services we have. So for some of parts of your application, for example, the front end, you may want to expose a service onto an external IP address. So this is basically being able to make your service that talks to your application or parts of the application accessible externally outside of the cluster. All right. And so that's what it says. That's outside of your cluster. And so here are some types of services that are available. So Kubernetes service types allow you to specify what kind of service you want. Maybe you have a service that you don't want to expose externally. That's fine too. And so the different types of services will allow you to make that decision. The default service is the cluster IP. So right there is spoiled. It. If services come in types, it must be that oh, there's a default type and the cluster IP is a default type. So let's see and learn what these different service types are. So types of values are there and their behaviors are cluster IP, which is the default one, exposes the server on a cluster internal IP address. So remember what we said, each pod gets an IP, each service gets an IP, but those IP addresses are internal to the cluster. So anything within the cluster can access it. Doesn't go in, it cannot be used externally. So choosing this value makes the service only reachable from within the cluster. This is the default service type. And so we saw that when we create a cluster, um, a service array, we can go to another node or from another pod, we can access that service. The next one is node port. This one exposes the service on each node's IP address at a specific port. And that's why it's called node port. And we're going to see this in the illustration. Well, there's a first way in which you can expose your service that's inside the Kubernetes cluster externally. And so notice a cluster IP service, which is the default one, to which the node service routes is automatically created. You will be able to contact the node port service from outside the cluster by requesting node IP address colon port, right? Which is just normal stuff. Okay, I can read just node then the port. There's also a load balancer, which exposes the service externally using a cloud provider load balancer. Um, so node port and cluster IP service. So this um, node port and cluster IP services to which the external load balance routes are automatically created. Um, when you use a load balancer, basically what it, the Kubernetes does is interact with the load balancer from that cloud provider or service provider and configures it so that when you try to access the load balancer, which is external, external to the cluster, it is going to be able to route that load balancer traffic to a node port, which we're gonna to see today um, in the next video, but we're gonna learn about today. And therefore, 
wrote it into the cluster IP service. Okay. The, ex the next one is external name. And we're not going to really think about this that much. It basically means just assigning a name to your service so that, oh, again, externally, someone could just use the name and then reach your, your service. All right. So those are the four types. Um, they go into more detail here about the different types, yada, 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 yada. I'll jump to the illustration. So let's start off with a Kubernetes cluster. And so we know that in a Kubernetes cluster, it's going to be made up of nodes. These are the places where our pods get to run. Okay. So we have three nodes here. So those are our nodes. And because those nodes can talk to each other, they must be able to talk to each other in order to form a cluster. We're going to say that's our physical network. Those are machines we have access to. Now, the software that's running Kubernetes and all this other stuff, and what we care about are pods, because that's what we really create as the fundamental workload or thing to execute our application. Those are within Kubernetes. And so they're going to run on nodes, but we still don't quite have direct access to them. And so as we know, each pod gets its own IP address. A pod look like a local node or like a local host within it. So multiple containers will run within a pod, but they all just talk on local host to each other. We've done all this already. And so each pod gets its own IP address. So if pod A was running in on node one, for example, and pod C is running on node three, once pod A knows the IP address of pod C, it can just talk to pod C. It can just send and traffic and that's it. It gets routed across the network, the physical network. But for now, we will say that these pods sort of form their own what we'll call pod network, which is their, like their own little thing that they got going on, spans nodes, but we don't need to know about it and think about it. Now, enter services. So let's say we have this service one, and based on the coloring, it seems like service one is really responsible for managing or routing traffic to pod B and C. And so we know if any traffic comes to service one, the service, right? Remember, each service gets an IP address. This is what the documentation refers to as the cluster IP. It always gets it. A service always gets an IP address within the cluster. Pods get an IP address within the cluster too. That's why you can access them from anywhere. But the service also gets its own IP address, right? And now that means when you talk to a service, if you were to talk to a service, it would actually route that traffic, or if you send traffic to a service, it would actually send it or route it onto the pod network so it can get to the right pod. Because remember, our service is doing this load balancing for us. It's saying, oh, you want to make a connection to one of the pods I manage, go to pod B. Oh, you want to make a connection to one of the pods I manage, go to pod C. And it's doing that thing, right? So if we have another service, let's say service two, we know that Basically, service one and service two can sort of form their own network if you like, right? Because they can communicate with each other. So we can say it all, they have a service network going, right? Just like we have the physical network for the node, the pod network for the pods. This is like service network if you like. If you imagine that pod A wanted to talk to service one, why would pod A want to use service one instead of saying I want to talk to pod B or C? Well, because if pod A knew the IP address of pod B or C, it would have to make that decision about which one it wants to talk to. And if one of them dies or scaled down or whatever, it would no longer be there. So it's best that pod A doesn't think about talking to pod B or C, but rather it wants to use the service uh, provided by them, which is going to come through service one. So when pod A wants to talk to service one, it has to send the traffic to the service network. Of course, it's going to get there to service one, and then service one is going to redirect it or forward it to the appropriate pod based on the pod availability and whatever you know load balancing rule it's using. So that's what's going on, right? I, I didn't put IP addresses on the pod, and I didn't put IP addresses on the service. Remember, they're there. Each pod and each service have their own IP address. They want to draw too many lines. Now. This is pretty much all you need to know for internal service communication. And this is what we refer to this type of service is a cluster IP service, right? Because the IP address that's on the cluster is the IP address not from your network, but it's internal to Kubernetes. Kubernetes manages it. And the services can reach each other. The pods can reach the 
Autopods indirectly using the service IP address. So that's all internal. There's nothing external. You cannot access the service or the pods externally at this point, even with all the service in place. To access things externally, what we need is a way for the nodes that you do have access to, these physical nodes, to get in the picture. And so what we can do is we can say on every node, what if we had a port open on every node? So it doesn't matter which node I hit. So I don't have to go to one node, I can go to any node. And basically, once I go to that node, that node will then forward the traffic to the service that I configure. So once you create a node port service, well, you still get the regular service with a service IP address. You still get that with a cluster IP address, sorry. But you get this other thing where node on each node, a port is open so that oh, it now forwards. And so it's like a node service that forwards that traffic for that node to the right service that you want, right? The cluster IP service, if you want to think of it that way. And so with this now, now is the first time we can now access whatever the pods are doing or whatever externally from the Kubernetes cluster because we now can just say node one, whatever its IP address is, port you know 8080, and since the port is open on those nodes, then now I can know to, to do that. That's no different than anything else I've been doing before. And so it's going to get forwarded into the right service. And then the, again, same thing as before, that service is going to forward it to the right pod. Now I didn't put in for service two that oh, it's actually talking to pod one, uh, to pod A, because it's just too many lines, but you get, you get the picture. So hopefully this makes sense. If you're here and you like the material and you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. For those who are already subscribed, thank you for coming back. Thanks for your patience. Stay safe. Whatever you do, enjoy. Take care. Bye.